So this I is now call call. the New Carlisle City Council meeting to yeah. order February fourth, two thousand nineteen, at seven p.m. Just for the public. Mrs. Burner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to do the invocation. If you don't mind rising, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for letting us gather in the freest country in the world. We are allowed to express our thoughts, uh, our votes, and anything else that is uh, given to us by you, Father God, Lord. Let the city continue to grow, continue to thrive, Lord. Bless our firefighters and our first responders. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's say our flag. Let's the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. We have action on the minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes. Second. Mayor Reynolds. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Minutes accepted, 6 0. Passive communications, there are none tonight. City manager's report, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor, uh, members of council, and members of public. Would like to share with you the city manager's report. Under informational item, various boards opening. We've got three openings on three different boards in the city. The first opening is on the Parks and Recreation Board, uh, second uh, opening is on a Board of Zoning Appeals. And the uh, last opening is on our tax review board. So if you have any interest in serving those, please give me a call or email at the city building. Um, I still am working on the legal ad for those. And I, once that legal ad hits, I will be also posting those on Facebook as well. Uh, 2019 operating budget timeline. Uh, we approved by regular ordin ordinance. I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of why I put this legal ad thing in here. Um, so we're going to bypass that. i got to figure out why that's in there. Um, but anyway, on 311, um, we will be having a special meeting if council approves that tonight for the purpose of passing the budget and also um, having our town hall. So I'm going to jump around on this. Um, so under upcoming town hall 311, need a motion to approve. Is council okay with having a budget, um, the budget hearing on 311 with our town hall meeting before that? and then go into the special meeting for the approval of the budget after. I'm okay, I'm okay with that. And that puts us within the time frame to it, get it Yes, down. according to that last one. Good deal. Yes, double checking. Council, is there anyone available? Don't move. Good. This is mine. Who made the motion? No one yet. Oh, did we make the motion? Oh, no, Mr. Did. Cook, sorry. I thought yeah. Ron did. <laughs> I didn't hear anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Mr. Cook? Yes. All right. And who was the second? Second. Okay. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. So, Mr. May, if it's okay with you, we'll start the, is 6.30 still, or do you want to? Still doable. 6.30? Do yep. So, 6.30 will be the town hall portion, and then the 7 o'clock will start the special meeting for the purpose of passing the budget. Are you okay? okay. Sounds good. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, moving on with the city management report. Um, I had discussed last, at the last meeting, um, some issues we had with the Prentice Drive project and the state coming to audit that project, which ultimately led into the city owing about a $24,000 balance. We do have a meeting set. Me and Mr. Kiko will be going up to the county to discuss that with them. That meeting is set for um, Thursday, February 7th. So as soon as that meeting is done, I will update council and then also have an update on the city manager report for the first meeting in March as well. Uh, creating healthy communities. That is a grant that we work with that we get all this fabulous, great playground equipment out here with. We've got them now for about three years in a row. Um, they want to have a partnership again for 2019. It's a good deal for everyone. So I'm graciously going to accept that. I do have a lunch meeting set with them for uh, Tuesday, February 5th to discuss our 2019 projects and see how they can align and help us out with those. 
We have um, bu budget work sessions coming up Monday, February 11th, Wednesday, February 13th, Tuesday, February 19th, and Wednesday, February 20th. <coughs> Please note that all those work sessions begin at 7 p.m. with the exception of the work session that begin, that, that's on Tuesday, 2 19. That will start um, after our regularly scheduled council meeting. I believe that's all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Why is this on here? We are now at Just comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes. That's what it is. Hearing none. Thank Committee you. reports. Will you do none. That, uh, Resolutions. None. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Berner. We're on ordinance. Uh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Ordinance 19. Quick there for a second. <laughs> Ordinance 19-01E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. <clears throat> and ordinance authorizing the city manager to purchase one influent raw water pump for the wastewater influent building upgrade project and declaring an emergency. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to accept Ordinance 19-01E. Second. An explanation of this ordinance. Um, we have a pump that's not operational right now at the wastewater plant. It could present a dire emergency if it does go out. We do have a replacement one on site. However, once we begin utilizing that, it's about $5,000 a month just for the rental of it and an additional probably $1,000 a month for the operations of that pump. So certain portions of the Ohio Revised Code allow us in emergency situations to bypass the bidding project, uh, bid, bidding process in order to facilitate getting a new pump as soon as possible. And that's what this ordinance does tonight, and that's what's in front of council. Council, any questions? Yeah, Mrs. Berner. Okay. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted 6-0. Business? Yes, ma'am. Uh, moving on to other business, we have <clears throat> Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. <coughs> the city offices will be closed on Monday, February 18th to observe President's Day. Um, executive session, there is none. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cook, you mentioned you had something. Yes. I would like to make a motion that council go ahead and set up a charter review committee. Second it. Any discussion? Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cook, could you just go over the details of what Primarily, you there's been quite a bit of controversy here lately. Certain areas of our charter apparently do not address the needs of this community. I know our charter basically addresses the fact <clears throat> that the language says every eight years, which would make it 2021. I have researched both it and the Ohio Revised Code. I cannot find anywhere <coughs> that would preclude us from setting up a charter review committee and having that committee bring forth its recommendations to be placed on the ballot this November. Now, if it means that we have to have a dispensation from the law director, then so be it. But I think at this point, it's time that we do this in order to get our city back to where it should be. Council, anything else? Uh, so is, is this something we need to check with her on? I think, the, I think once this hits her bailiwick, it will be checked, yes. Okay. Thank you. Right. Ready? Yes. Oh, Mr. Bridge. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Do you want me to have Lynette do a legal opinion on that? I think you're going to have to. Can yeah. I get a motion support counsel to have her do that, or do you just want me to do it? I think if we, if we pass the motion, I think at that point, yes. Then do it. Okay. You do it. So the, the actual passage of the motion I can use as my authority to have her, yeah. on behalf of counsel, get the legal opinion for Okay. Understood. 
Mr. Brenner. Mr. Mayor. Oh, Mr. Lauer, yes. So if we pass this tonight and it gets on Lynette's desk and she says, uh, you know, whatever, she, she found something you may have missed, we can go back and nix this, correct? Well, I would assume it'd be nixed with her saying it's next. Right. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. All right. Thank you. Mr. Cobb. In, in that charter, you got some things that contradict one another. Absolutely. Yes. I agree with you. And by the state law, you can make amendments to the charter. And, and, and you know, Mr. Cook and I have been looking at it, and it's got to be done before we end up in a big lawsuit. My question is, is with amendments, it, to the charter it states that it's for like petitioning to get those amendments on so you're just making sure like you looked into that as well making sure that we can still do it even without the amendments I've looked that into nature. that also i think that if we do have a charter review committee they we bypass that can bypass all okay. of that all right thank you any other council comments no mrs burner <clears throat> all right mr cook yes vice mayor lindsey yes Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. Fantastic. Now, Mr. Lindsay, I'm going to hand you this because I had spoke to Mr. Bridge and Mr. Lowry, uh, about, and I've emailed council about having a ordinance put forth before us, if council would approve, for waiving certain fees for federal workers who haven't been paid. So we had 34 days of a shutdown where federal workers have not been paid. And I figured some communities have already done it, and I think it was a good idea if we were to potentially waive that, not, when I say waive, not permanently waive, it's 30 days after the, the government opens, they were to pay back their bill in full. The only thing it stops is from penalties from adding in their water or sewer being shut off. So, uh, and I will continue to work with Mr. Bridge on, on like the details of it, if this were to pass tonight, of how I believe it would be a good way to go about it. Uh, so I didn't know if there would be a second for my motion. I'll second. Oh, oh, oh go ahead. No, no, I just had a question, whichever's yes. first. Okay. So Second's first, then question. Gotcha. But, Sorry. You second, Chris? I second. Mr. Lowry. <laughs> oh, <actually>, you go. <laughs> do, we, do, do we not need the fine print details done before we vote on it? No, because uh, how our charter is written and how Lynette interpreted it for us, that we no longer have the authority to talk to her uh, which we did at one point, if you remember, like we, we, like you sent over an ordinance to her, I've sent over, we've all mostly, except for two of us, have sent over ordinances to her and asked her to draft them in years past. And she told us last year that it's no longer allowed. So now we have to have this part approved for her to approve the actual language uh, that she'll write up and then it'll be submitted before us, do a first read, and then we'll vote on it a third time. So. You also have the ability to make that an emergency ordinance too, if you want that, and that's something you all should probably talk about and do because you don't want this to prolong another yeah. 45 40, days. 50, we have, yeah. what, three, three weeks of a federal that. shutdown? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> potential federal shutdown but again. What if it happens weeks? again and again? You know, you know that's something we're gonna do. It's been happening since 1998, so. Yeah, I know. The, uh, so is there an amendment to this ordinance? I will move that we make it an emergency if council so chooses. Your charge, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, can you give me a rough idea how many federal employees in this city are involved, were affected by that? That's the thing is that you can't really ever determine because no no one will actually tell you because that, that's there up to them. However, I know the Department of Agriculture did inform me that there are several that live with quote within the community, which I asked what the community is, and they said. Bethel Township, New Carlisle, Donaldsville, in that area. And that was one of the de affected departments. But they can't tell you exactly how many or who they are. So. They could probably, excuse me, uh, they could probably show identification, correct? Yes. And with that, we'll yeah. set up a set of rules where they would, like in Toledo, where they say <clears throat> you have to bring a canceled pay stub or a paycheck stub, and then you sign an affidavit that you are a federal employee, so you're not cheating the system. Is it Mr. Lowry? Oh, okay. Is this the discussion question yeah, time? Yeah, Okay. I didn't want to step on toes. My only concern with this was, is and I, you know, I spoke to the mayor about it, and I, I think Mr. Bridget even talked about it, is what kind of can of worms would this open up? I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad idea. I just think that, you know, if you if you set the standard for uh, federal or government employees who are 
you know, were off work because of the government shutdown. Uh, you know, what happens to, uh, you know, Fab Metal, say, for just example, says they're going to lay off or, or, or uh, go on a temporary shutdown. You know, what happens to those employees, you know, if they're going to come to the city and say, well, you know, you did it for them, why can't you do something for me? I did see uh, a comment on, on social media and I thought it was kind of interesting and then looking into it, it's kind of, what's the delay, like, you know, let's say the water bill's due today or whenever the due date is. I mean, how much time do they have before the, the water actually gets shut off? It's like 30 days, 30, 45. Well, the bills go out basically on the first of the month. Um, they're due by the 15th. And then usually it is another two and a half weeks after About that, three, three weeks. Okay, so you almost think, have three weeks. It's usually a month after the bill is due. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, would it be, I mean, it sounds like there's already some built-in steps in there as far as you know, you've got this much time to get your bill paid. I mean, would it be better to do some sort of, um, you know, just a, a blanket type deal where, okay, you've got this many days and if you pay this amount or, you know, you know what I'm saying, some sort of step program instead of just narrowing it down to federal workers only. I just, I just think that would maybe put a bad taste in some people's mouths as far as, you know, I'm having a hard time, but you apparently don't. You know, I'm not saying you, you know what I'm saying. I get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> to make it better across the board. Thank yeah. you. Uh, that, that's my only thought and concern on it. Mr. Britt, the, uh, is there any, uh, if somebody falls on hard times right now, is there any way they can pay a partial bill and keep their water on if they don't have all the money at one time? There's nothing. No, you can go on repayment plans, but you only can take advantage of it, I think, once a year or twice a year, some, three times a year maybe. I think it's three times a year three for times a repayment plan. Three times a year plan. for a repayment plan. The, the, uh, to, on, on your uh, question, Mike, I know that you mentioned Fab Metals, if they would lay their, their employees off or shut down, all of those employees are entitled to workman, or, uh, not workman comp, uh, oh, well, unemployment, to where the federal workers are not entitled to any type of supplement pay. The, uh, there's something, and I don't understand why they wouldn't be, but I know I heard on the news that they wasn't entitled to it. Mm -hmm. So I can only assume that, you know, maybe the news is right in that aspect. Right. The, right. Uh, any, any other, Mr. Bridge? Uh, Mr. Kick, I wanted to make a statement if that's okay. E e you actually, it was the repayment plan. Okay. And I think it's because federal employees do get paid at, the end. at some point, so they have yeah. to give up all their benefits. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from council? Mr. Lindsay. Just a minute, sir. One last comment. Okay, go ahead, sir. <laughs> comment. I was, was going to get your second. <laughs> no, uh, we already have a second. Not so on the amendment. Oh, that's true. <laughs> um, so if they don't pay their bill, is that, does interest and penalties apply for regular folks in New Carlisle? Oh, there's definitely a late fee, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, if they, so if they don't pay it on the 15th, then the interest will build. Okay. Oh, it's a late fee. It's not really interest. It's like five bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's like a late, late yeah. fee. Yeah. So, all right. That's my only question. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second to the amendment? Second. Okay. Now we're voting on the amendment first. Correct? That's how it goes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Mrs. Berner. <laughs> All right. It, okay. Mr. Lowry. No. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Acting Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. No. Motion accepted five to one. Now, on to the original. On to the original, yes. Okay. And that is Mr. Lowry. No. <clears throat> Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Acting Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Sheen. Yes. Motion accepted, 5-1. Any other comments from members of council? Another business. Other business. Oh, Mr. Bridge. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, <laughs> forgot sir. To, I forgot to uh, give an update on something, and I also need an additional um, uh, motion to approve. After I got the council packets done last week, I got a phone call Friday afternoon, late Friday afternoon, from uh, Lepi Enterprises, and that is the company that we had hired to do the asbestos survey at the Madison Street School. Good news to report. 
the three samples that I updated with an email to council, that if those come back at 1% or more, then the price to remove all that asbestos is going to be anywhere between 400000 and 500000 Those three preliminary samples all came back less than 1%. So that is fantastic news. However, to be safe, there are 17 additional samples that I would like to get tested, just so we have a complete picture of what goes on. That will cost an additional $1,275, $1, give or take some change. Um, if we don't do this, if we ever go to move that building in the future, we'll have to get those sampled anyway. I'd rather do it now while we have current pricing in place as opposed to five, six years down the road. Um, so I ask for a motion to approve the original <coughs> asbestos study, even though it was well below my spending authority. So I would feel much safer with this decision if I had council support with getting the remaining 17 samples tested as well. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Johnson. I move to give the city manager authority to get the additional 17 samples that he is wanting done at Second. the cost of around 17 to I can or, uh, exactly 72. Right Excuse me for being on my phone. I want to use the utilize the calculator. Yeah, right. So seventy-five dollars a piece times seven, well, one thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars to be exact. Council, any discussion? Mr. Cow. Mr. Bridge, what's you going to do with this building once we find out what we got in it? Well, I think this, and this is a great question, and I think it serves two points here. One, if we ever need to do something with that building, these are the steps we're going to have to take in the first place. The other part of this is we need to know where the asbestos is. I gave you an update that we know it's in the windows, it's stuck between the windows, but those other 17 samples may say that, you know, on this portion of this wall, it came up 1%. You know, so we just need to have, it's really for me and for all of them, for everyone, a complete picture of what the asbestos looks like. Now that's just the sample and that's, that's the testing. It has nothing to do with the removal, but at least we know what's there, 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 and there. And that's something the city has always negated to do. We have demolition quotes from years ago, but we don't have that asbestos part, that environmental part, which is super crucial when you look at these older buildings and when you tear them down. So it's really just a safety blanket so we have all the information we need and it's definitely gonna save us money down the road if we need to actually tear that building down because these are the steps we'd have to do in the first place. Okay, we know we've got a, some asbestos in there. Yes. Correct? Yes. Is there any way of keeping people out? Um, that's something we can look into. I, I mean, that's something we can, we, we try to keep people out period now. Um, and why I've done a, we've in the past few years, and this is at the recommendation of our fire chief because it's getting so bad. The floors are getting bad, the ceilings are getting bad that we stop letting people tour it. We stop letting people just randomly go through it. Before, if you were a ghost hunter, you wanted to go through it, you called, we gave you permission, you signed a waiver liability form and it was over. But it's getting to the point to where it's just unsafe for anyone to be in there, especially when you get in the basement of that place, there's a pool or gym that's actually recessed into the ground that it's pitch black you're walking you don't see that you're falling 10 15 feet into a pit so of course we'll always have the curious teenagers and young adults who want to get in without our permission but as far as actively letting people with permission in we've been cutting that back for a couple years now mr. mr lindsay mr bridge is is the school and the property up there posted in their trespassing Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's, yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that gives the deputies authority to arrest somebody if they find them back in yeah. the trespass? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have. We mm -hmm. have. Okay. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Council, anything else? Oh. All right, Mrs. Burner. Good. Okay. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Motion accepted 6-0. Thank you. Now, Mr. Bridge, before we move on further, we discussed, you estimated this earlier. Just want to clarify, do you believe that we need a motion to set a special meeting to have an executive session? Or, do you, sorry, do you believe we should have, vote for the executive session for the next meeting? I don't think you guys need majority vote. I think one council can call executive session at any cool. point in time, but don't quote me on that. I think it's the mayor or four members of council, if I remember correctly. It's in, no, I think it's any member of council. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, fantastic. Can you consider it called. Right. Yeah, so someone calls. I, just, I, don't, I don't have the authority to put it on the agenda <coughs> from my own calling. Right, fantastic. 
Mm. Make a motion. We have an executive session after the next council meeting. All right. Well, okay. We don't need a vote, so we're good. <laughs> that is for the purpose of, we have to state the purpose. Yes. So purpose of purchase or sale of property. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's how it should read. Uh, who was the second? Any comments on the motion? No? Mrs. Burner. All righty. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. M Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Motion accepted. <clears throat> zero. Any other business? Mr. Lowry. I have two things, sir. Yes, please. sir. Uh, one, uh, Mr. Bridge, the uh, old Westlake property, uh, I know that's not ours. That still belongs to Tecumseh Local, correct? They were the football field used to be? Correct. Correct. Okay. I was wanting to know if, if we could have, so you, you know the road, that, we all know the road that goes through there. It's got the gate at the end. Miss Haney Lane? The, what is it? Miss Henny Lane. It was built after she passed away from cancer. It was Miss Henny Lane. This, well, what, well, that's what it was when I was little. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a gate there. I was wanting to know if, if we could find out if, if Tecumseh would, you know, either lock it or, or leave it open because you know i don't know if you see it you live over in that direction there's a lot of cars that will go okay. flying through there at night uh deputy allender i don't know if you ever have any problems with that uh when the weather got bad we had an issue with people doing donuts in the field we had we do people use it to cut through and there are times and i don't know who does it that the gate is closed i mean i was back there probably about two weeks ago and the gate was closed because and i thought maybe somebody from the school did it to prevent the people from doing donuts in the field and then today it's open so i'm not sure who has control over that but right i have a comment on it um okay. i was involved with the youth football organization and um, whoever rents the property is it's up to them to okay. take care of that gate um, we fixed it multiple times and it would get vandalized broken and it would it would end up open when we thought that it was closed and stuff but um it the school had always said it was our responsibility okay to, so it would probably be the community garden now because they're renting that property Okay. Well, maybe once they get settled in, it'd be something we could discuss with them. <laughs> well, like, I, I think they're going to want to have it closed. It, right. Yeah. It's. It, it was up to us again to put one in yeah. when we rented it, and yeah, we always just would keep that one closed. And. Number two. Yes, number two. I just wanted to send out a uh, big. Uh, Thank you to Deputy Allender. Uh, seems like uh, she's always uh, popping up with, uh, you know, people talking about how uh, great of a job she's doing in New Carlisle with community policing and getting out and taking time to spend time with kids and families and, you know, just taking the time to get to know some of our citizens, which is really important. I think having a really, uh, you know, good police presence with uh, someone that you you know and you, that you can walk up to and trust and. Uh, so I just, you know, I don't know if anybody else had seen that post on, on Facebook, but uh, you mind uh, going over what that was all about real quick? I was, I was just driving around in the area and saw a bunch of kids and, and adults out sledding. So I stopped and was talking to some of the adults and there was, there were some kids out there that I decided to go sledding with and I knew it could go one of two ways. Somebody's going to take a video and, and post it not my job and that I should be getting drugs off the street, but uh, I did not know anybody was going to post it to social media. Um, I don't know, in, in my opinion, and some don't agree, I think that is just as important as, as making traffic stops and responding mm -hmm. to calls and patrolling. Um, you know, unfortunately, we have a society today that are raising kids to hate police officers. So I feel like any impact we can make with the kids now when they're young and to, to trust law enforcement is just as important as anything else I could be doing. So it just was something fun to do for the day for, you know, 20 minutes. And, and I enjoyed it probably more than... <laughs> the out there, it, it was fun. That's awesome. Yeah, you're right, though. I mean, it is 100% just as much as important as any other aspect of your job. So I just want to say thank you again. Thank you. Mr. Cobb, you had something on that. Deputy yeah, Alexander, I want to thank you for the job you do here. Thank you. You do much. care about the citizens in the city. And as far as I'm concerned with them kids sledding in that, that's good PR. Mm hmm. And if anybody's got anything to say about it, I'll stand behind you. Thank you. It helps when you have a community Probably who's accepting of that. You know, so it, it helps. Thank you very much. Good. All right. Anybody? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move we adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. <laughs>